Well, I guess I'll start off with uh, you know what Coach Canada did. Just extremely excited to be here. Extremely excited to be part of Wisconsin. And I've known Brett for a number of years, and have always kept in touch with that glimmer of hope that maybe I'll get to be a Badger one day. Um, had an opportunity to play against Wisconsin twice uh, while I was at Bowling Green. One time we scared the mess out of them, and I think uh, that really you know helped me. Uh, this far down the road, get a job here at a, at a great place. Real excited about working at a tradition-rich place. That's important to me and my family. I love the pageantry of college football. I love the tradition of college football. And this is just a great fit for, for me and my family. So we're very, very excited. Questions? Some, someone that said that you had watched um, saw one of Wisconsin's games and you saw the wide receiver number four. What did you think of him when you well, it's funny because I get a lot of, everybody knows how I coach and the kind of guys I've coached and kind of guys I like. And uh, so I've been getting some text messages from some colleagues the last couple of days on how much I'm going to love coaching Abby. And uh, I'm really excited. I've watched him play. I mean, I'm hitting my wife on the couch here, you know, during a couple of games. Like, look at this. He does everything. He punt return. He's blocking. You know, he's, he's the kind of kid I love to, uh, to coach. So I'm really excited. I haven't even got a chance to talk to him yet. I'm going to reach out to all those guys here later on uh, tonight, but I'm excited to coach him. How do you coach? You're a pretty enthusiastic guy. Yeah, I'm high energy. You know, and, and it goes back to the, the no huddle spread that I've been brought up in. You have to be. You're running around like a madman out there, and that's just the way I've been brought up to in the business. You know, under some great coaches in, in Urban Meyer and Butch Jones and Greg Brandon, Willie Taggart. That's just you're you're young and you're you're energetic and you're high energy and you're intense. And it's kind of like Coach Canada said, I am who I am. I coach how I coach, and you know, it's not always uh, it's not always puppy dogs and roses out there. So it gets a little hard. So. I coach intense. I think Urban also referred to as a relentless recruiter. Can you define relentless on the recruiting trail? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know what that means. I think that just means doing your job really well and staying after a kid if you want him, sinking your teeth into him and opening your arms to all the people that are helping make him the decision for him and with him mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, parents to aunts and uncles to cousins, all that kind of stuff and, and knowing how to get to a kid. You know, I think that's probably what he meant. Do you think uh, last year in the pro style offense is going to help you for what you face here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, everything happens for a reason, and, and I believe that. And gosh dang, yeah, last year, you know, when Coach Meyer decided to resign the second time, it was one of those things where, okay, now what? And uh, I got a call from uh, from Western Kentucky and Willie Taggart, and uh, he gave me an unbelievable opportunity to be an offense coordinator for the first time. And part of the deal was, hey, uh, Zach, love the way you coach, love the things you've done. We're going to run Stanford's offense. And I said, oh, I've never done that, Coach. He goes, you're a great coach. You'll learn quick. And I did. And uh, I'll tell you what, it opened my eyes to a lot of different things. And a year down the road, I think it helped me get this job because now I can come in and I understand it's a lot easier to, to go from that to this now that I've done it and called it. So, so what do you think of the style here based on what you've done for most of your background? You know what, I'll, I'll tell you what. At first, I was a little, you know, I didn't know what to think of it. I was, I was just a little unsure. And then all of a sudden, we, we started really pounding people <laughs> and uh, kind of taking the will away from other teams. And I kind of got excited about it. And, uh, you know, you take some things you did in the spread and you make it work in a pro-style offense. And it, it's all intertwined somehow. And I really ended up enjoying it and, and excited to be in it again. It's going to be hard, <clears throat> gonna be hard uh, going back from offensive coordinator, position coach, once you get a little taste of that? You know, I, I don't think so. I mean, like Coach said, he, he wanted to hire some guys without egos. I don't have an ego. I just want to win. I want to win that third Big Ten championship. You know, I grew up watching the Big Ten. I'm from Michigan. And uh, so I'm just excited to win. And, and I don't care who calls plays or how we do it. I'm just going to coach as hard as I can every day and, and try and get another ring. What do you expect out of your guys? You know, what, you know, how would you describe you know, what you're looking for? Well, number one, we're going to block. We're going to be the best blocking receivers in the country, and I know there's some other, other coaches around the country that might say that. Uh, we're going to do that, and I promise you're going you're gonna to turn on the film. You're going to see uh, uh, just, uh, I'm going to use that word, relentless uh, group of receivers blocking. And the reason I believe in that is because it opens up the pass game for those kids later down, down, the, uh, down the stretch of a game. Um, and it's a team game. It's all about the team, and we're going to block, and we're going to be high energy. We're going to go through the whistle, and uh, we're going to be a great fundamentalist. And I believe in that, and my track record speaks for itself. And I, I got taught a long time ago, just press play if you want to know how a coach's uh, players play. And I believe in that. So we're going to be high energy. We're going to block our tails off, and we're going to try and make some plays after, uh, after the catch. I think that's big. 85% uh, of your yards at receiver come after the catch. So we're going to try and work on that, and that's a skill that can be taught and, and learned too. Blocking, how does it open up pass points later in the game? I think you wear down, wear down a secondary. 
you know, you just wear him down and wear him down and wear him down, and all of a sudden, you've been blocking a guy for 15 plays in a row, getting after him. The next time you run right past him, and he thinks you're going to block him. So things like that. It's all it's all mentality that we're going to bring that that I've always tried to bring, and uh, I think that's what uh, was unique about our offenses. At uh, the last couple of places I was was uh, in the no huddle was you know we we brought that pro style mentality of you know, toughness and an attitude to that no huddle where you don't see that a lot. It's more finesse. We weren't finesse. And so I think uh, I think that helped me down the road. Being a former walk-on, does that influence how you coach, do you think? Absolutely. I got a Napoleon complex, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> uh, I have an edge to me. I've always been like that. You know, I was always the, the smallest, skinniest, whatever, and I had to earn a scholarship at, at Central Michigan. So, sure, absolutely. And, and I always thought that if I have to do all this stuff just to get some 15 snaps in a game, imagine if I can have a guy that's three times as athletic as me uh, and teach him to do this stuff. Wow, what would we have? And so I think I've been able to do that some places. You've been in the SEC for a year, but when a guy comes from the MAC and you're a Western Kentucky, then you get an opportunity at a Big Ten school. Yeah. And what does it seem like, all the, you know, the benefits to this place and all that? Oh. I mean, do you appreciate it more, do you think? I appreciate it a ton. I, I, I've... When, when me and my wife were lucky enough to, to go to Florida and now here, I can tell you this, that, that my family uh, appreciates all that. We don't take any of that for granted that we're at a place like this. We've seen some coaches that do, and uh, it's, it makes my stomach turn. This is a great place that people would, uh, would uh, you know, cut off their right arm to coach at. So I appreciate it, and I don't take it for granted. And, and we were sitting last night at dinner, and the Michigan-Michigan State game was on, and Iowa and Purdue were playing, I believe, and I go, man, I'm in the Big Ten. I grew up watching Big Ten. SEC is great. Don't get me wrong. That was fun, uh, but I'm a Midwest guy, so this is uh, this is a dream come true for me. You must have an understanding wife. I do. I have a football coach's <laughs> wife. She's uh, she's great, and I got a great family. And, you know, I have two daughters and a daughter on the way, so it's going to be a house full of princesses, not football players. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. what, what did Urban see in you initially that led him to believe you'd be a good coach? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Just a, a hard work. Um, you know, attention to detail, and a lot of the same ideas that he has, a lot of, uh, a lot of philosophical things that he has on how to coach players and being intense and being personal and being really involved in their life. That's why I don't really have a whole lot of uh, aspirations to go to the pros ever because, uh, you know, I like to see a kid develop from freshman year to senior year, not only on the grass but off the grass. And that's important, and me and my family get very involved in, in our players um, on and off the field, and I think uh, at the end of the day they're going to play harder for you. And I don't know how much you can do that up when you're getting a paycheck every week at the, at the next level. That's important to me and my family. We invest everything we have into our players' lives. I think on a flip turn, on the flip side, you get more out of them. Have you seen any tape of the guys besides Abu Darius or seen anything? Else? You know, I watched a little bit of some, some, uh, some drills upstairs. People were talking to me, and I was kind of being rude still watching the computer. Uh, but I'm going to watch some more uh, for sure. So i got to form my own opinion here in the next couple months and then, and then get after it in the spring. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Urban Meyer staff's had it too. Just kind of the, the way that they progressed to become head coaches, some of these guys, and it's happened here with Paul Chris and Dave Doran over the last couple of years. How much does that intrigue you when you take an offer like this? Oh, it intrigues me tremendously. I'd love to be a head football coach someday. I know Dave Doran really well and saw his career develop, and, and obviously Coach, uh, coach Bielma too. Uh, I've watched him. I met him when he was a linebacker coach at K-State wearing a purple coat uh, at a high school one time. and. I mean, 10 years down the road now, he's a head coach and he's got a couple Big Ten championships. And yeah, I, I'd love to do that. And, and that's why another reason I jumped at the opportunity here because I know that Coach Bielma is going to develop coaches and, and help me be a better coach as well. What appeals mm -hmm. to you about Matt, too, and working for him? Coach Canada, I've known for a long time. Uh, like he said, on the recruiting trail and also coached against him. I was at Bowling Green, he was at Northern Illinois. Um, and I played against him when he was at Indiana. Uh, so he's, he's like me. He's been in and out of a couple different styles of offenses, which is neat. So we can kind of put our, all of our ideas in a pot and, and stir them up and see what we're going to get to follow the blueprint here at Wisconsin. So I'm excited to work for him. Uh, heard great things about him. I have a lot of friends that have coached with him on staffs, offensive staffs that I know really well that have a tremendous amount of respect for him. So I think it's going to be a, a great fit. Do you think there's a chance to put your own imprint on things here with the, all the new offensive coaches? I hope so, yeah. Absolutely, I hope so. I think uh, every good coaching staff, offensive staff, defensive staff, you know, sits down and kind of sees what fits the players that we have, just like Coach Candace said, and, and we all put it in a, in a basket and mix it up and kind of pull out the things that are going to best fit us. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to utilize all of our minds, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Any idea what your primary recruiting area will be, or is it too soon still? I do not, not yet, nope.
nope, right now we're just trying to hang on to this class, and I think we'll, we'll get to that here in a couple of weeks.